good morning and namaste to all uh, let's start the class with the prayers om guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara guru sakshat par brahm tasmay shri gurave namaha om bho bhava swaha tat savitra vare nayam bhargo devasya dhimahe dhiyo yo naha prachodayat asto ma sat gamya तमसो मां ज्योतिर्गम्य मृत्योर्मा अमृत गम्य ओम सहना वबत सहना भुनक्त सह वीर करवा वही तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्त मां विद्वेशा वही ओम शांति 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 ओ Bhaj Govindam by Adi Shankaracharya Ji. And we ended our last class with verse number nine. So let's go look at it again. Where he is telling us a ladder of rise. And I was mentioning to you last week in Bhagavad Gita, compared to this, we have a by Lord Krishna, ladder of fall. So if both we can remember, we can really do our sadhana properly. So let's look at it, what Shankaracharya is telling us. Sat sangvate ni sangvatam, ni sangvate nirmohatvam, nirmohatve nishchal tattvam, nishchal tattve jivan mukti. Through the company of the good, there arises non-attachment. Through non-attachment, there arises freedom from delusion. When there is a freedom from delusion, there is the immutable reality. On experiencing this reality, there comes the state of liberated in life. Jivan Mukta. So instead of wasting our life in lust and passion, of our flesh, where we keep on dissipating our energies. He is giving us this Pratipaksh Bhavna. We must try to withdraw from all these passions. Spend the energy which we are conserving in seeking and serving Lord. So it's a great philosophy he has been talking about. Sure, philosophy seems really good to us. But it's almost impossible all of a sudden to live its recommended way of life. Often people feel this difficulty. They say, sure, it sounds pretty good, but how can we really bring it into our life? So that's why Shankaracharya Ji is giving us a very logical way of living. He is providing some very practical methods which will help us to walk the path. Otherwise, this philosophy seems very impractical. So that's why I was telling you in this verse, he is giving us a ladder of progress. Very simple. And if we carefully climb on this ladder, stay vigilant, keep on climbing, we can arrive at the highest reaches of perfection. Climbing we have to do. He is showing us a beautiful ladder, which is very practical for all of us. Because these philosophers, these great rishis, they understand that we are living every hour of our existence in the middle of the temptations of life. And our intellect alone can create a barrier for us. Because the fascination of these objects is so strong and they're so, many, so numerous. These enchantments are so powerful 
that the sensuous world is irresistible for most of us. So in order to reinforce the efforts of a student in the early days of seeking, he says, have the strength, have a commitment. Have a plenty of time with the company of good people. Part of your mind will tell you to go towards a sensuous life. But the company of these people, Satasang, will take you towards the other side. So even though we have the thoughts of this, but outer company is needed too. That's why in the old times in India, there were Gurukuls. And the disciples, they lived with the Guru. For years and years, we know that Lord Krishna did. Lord Ram did too. In the company of a Guru, and what did they do? They learned and they did the seva. That's how the foundation was built. That's how we can protect ourselves also from these temptations with the help of the company of the good. If it's not directly available right now to us through a living teacher or even a learned pandit, we don't know where to find those kind of a pandits. If we are sincere seekers, indirectly, we can get the company through the books also. These days, through the media, we have so many avenues. So idea is to have more and more higher thoughts in your mind. What you watch, what you study, where you go, what you do, all of it. That's called a satsang. Only then there will be a change in our personality. We cannot say that these days there are no gurukuls. That will be just a justification. Goal is still the same. Path is still the same. Whether it was in a previous yoga or whether it's right now, whether it's in India or whether it's in America or anywhere else. Sat Sang. That's what Shankaracharya is saying. The company that we keep is very important. To be in the company of the good is to be those who are devotees of the Lord. And they are also the seekers of the highest. When we are in the company of these people, then there's a power created in us. This power is almost like a fortress around us. This temptations of the world does not seep in. That's what happens with satsang. So as a result of the influence of the satsang, the human mind develops a steady flow towards the divinity. The sensuous fields of the attraction is dissipated from that kind of a mind. And this is what he says, ni sangtum. This is the secret of the detachment because you have de decided that you want to go higher. You don't want to dissipate your energy into the lower. And when the sense of attachment is sponged away from the heart, the inner crevices of the mind, that moh and all the delusory false values will not be there. It is always the mind that puts a value upon the objects. Objects themselves don't have value. Mind puts the value. So when this mind is looking at the higher, will not put a value to the lower. Lower can still be there, but mind is not putting value to the lower. So the, this worldly things, worldly places, they are, they become almost like they are not even there. This is what Ni Sang is. Physically they are there, but they are not in the mind of a seeker. Because for a seeker, the goal is higher. 
and when the mind has started seeing the things as they are because the mind has redeemed itself from its own vasanas then this mind will have a glimpse of the reality the tattva okay and when this experience becomes more and more established individual becomes god realized so this is the ladder he is giving it to us follow this ladder in order to become a jivan mukt this is what he is suggesting because right now we are on a ladder of a fall sometimes if you don't pay attention because it's very easy to go down in order to climb up we have to be very vigilant we have to be very careful okay you remember i mentioned it to you last week verse number 62 and 63 i'm sure you got some chance to look at those verses in bhagavad gita the ladder of the fall dhyaya to vishyan punsa sang teshu upjayate संगात संजायते कामा कामात क्रोध हो अभिजायते क्रोधात भवति सम्मोहा सम्मोहात समृति विभ्रमा समृति भ्रंशात बुद्धि नाशो बुद्धि नाशात परनश्यते ओके वी डोंट वांट टू गो टुवर्ड्स दैट वी वांट टू गो टुवर्ड्स द हायर ओके द लैडर ऑफ द अपवर्ड क्लाइम but steadfastness has to be there the experience of the highest should be the goal and then we become jivan mukta okay so this is verse number 9 let's look at number, number verse number 10 vyasi gate ka kaam vikara shushke nire ka kasara kashine vite ka parivara ज्ञाते तत्वे क संसार भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम सो ही कीप्स ऑन रिमाइंडिंग अस दिस भज मीन्स डिवोशन भजन इज द डिवोशन समबडी गेव द डेफिनेशन टू डिवोशन दे सेड डिवॉइड ऑफ योर सेल्फ इज डिवोशन normally we are always so full of ourselves but when you become shunya devoid of yourself is devotion god is everywhere and this is what we need to practice so vyasi gate when the age has passed that means the youthfulness has left vyasi gate gate means gone means where is kaam vikara lust and its play okay old person can't even walk properly can sit properly pains here and there where are the lust and the play that's what he's talking about shushke nire when the water is dried up kaam means where is ka sara lake means lake. Vite, when the wealth is reduced, it's gone. Ka means where? Parivara. Parivara over here could mean the family also. It could mean the your company also, your assistants also. Okay. So English term for parivar is retinue. Okay. Normally we think parivar is the family members. But sure, that is also true. Company. Gyate tatve when the truth is realized, come in sphere. Sansara. This is sansar. When the youthfulness has passed, where is lust and its play? When water is evaporated, where is the lake? When the wealth is reduced, where is the retinue? When the truth is realized. there is sansar so in these uh, very powerful four statements uh, shankaracharya ji is driving home to us the students the understanding that where the cause has ended the effects cannot continue 
cause and effect. That's what is bringing to our attention. So when youthfulness have passed away, where is the lust and its play? So when the cause is removed, the effect cannot remain all by themselves. So in all these four examples, when the water has dried up, the lake can no longer continue to exist. Dried up lake or tank can only express as the bed. You see only the bottom, you don't see any water. Only when the water is there, we'll call it a lake. And this water also means the water of desires, which are playing in our mind. So, but once these desires have dried up, how can a person affection strive to acquire and court? And when the wealth is reduced, where are the relations? Dependents, supporters. In short, whole retinue. They follow behind an individual only as long as someone can look after them. When the capacity in the individual has ended, the retinue also disappears. And we all know how uncertain wealth is. Nobody can say that how long I'm going to stay. I'm going to have all this. It doesn't take that long to depart. So with these three examples, it's clear that the cause is absent, the effect is also absent. But then he's carrying this analogy into the subjective realm also of spiritual perfection. And he's asking the question, where the truth is realized? Where is this ansar? Because when you see the reality, the absolute, the, you become a tattva Where is this sansar? Because the example which we normally see, the snake and the rope, if we see that it's a rope, where is the snake? It goes away. It was only a illusion, a delusion. Or even the post and the ghost also. When you see the post clearly, where is the ghost? It's not there. All the non-apprehension of the reality, only then misapprehension starts. So when you have seen the truth, there's no non-apprehension. You are apprehending it the way it is. So no misapprehension. Because right now, due to vasanas, which are called avidya also, the ignorance, the perfection is not experienced. Even though God is there, but we cannot see the God. We just have a vague idea about God. Even with that idea also, we keep on fighting. We just keep on making our own ignorance thicker and thicker. So he says, once you have experienced it, where is this ansar then? So through the process explained in the previous verse, because process is there, in order to have the experience of, of God, the reality, the tattva, the Brahma, whatever you want to call it, process is that. Then the vasanas get eliminated. That means the ignorance of the reality is ended. And all the misconceptions must end. Must end. So when once the vasanas have ended, the cause has been eliminated, naturally the effects cannot exist by themselves. So when the truth is realized, you become a tattva darshni. Where is the empirical phenomena of finite objects? You won't waste time into it. You will not waste this precious life for something which is 
so temporary. So when this inner vasana condition has been changed, the ego has been eliminated. Because this is what ego is. More the ignorance, higher the ego. When the ego, ignorance has ended, there's no ego. And where there's no ego, the world perceived, felt, the thought of that must go away too. So the experience of the infinite consciousness comes to reveal as the state of truth. And as this experience comes, the individuality ends. That's where the universal consciousness, those kind of a terms which we often hear in today's world also, translated in English, but in Sanskrit it's called Brahma Ved Brahma Eva Bhavati. According to Mundakupanishad, the knower of the Brahma becomes Brahma. For other people, world still exists, but knower of the Brahma. And then another thing in Shvetashtvar Upanishad we studied. Na anya pantha vidyate ayanaya. Then that which was discussed. In the previous verse, this is what we see. That there is no other path than this. Na anya pantha. So in the previous verse when he said, keep the company of the good by the, having the company of the good, you'll get detached from this temporary world. Company of the good. So na anya pantha. There's no other way. Okay, so now uh, we just uh, have excuses. We live in a family. Other people are not uh, with us. We don't need somebody else's uh, stamp. We can walk on this path by ourselves because it's basically the inner journey. We don't need somebody else's approval. Get up early in the morning. If some young mother says, I got to take care of my children. I got to take them to school. I got to go to work. Get up early in the morning. Do your sadhana. Effect of the sadhana you will see for the rest of the day. Internally. Body is functioning. Body is doing the work. But inside you are connected. So no excuses. Especially for most of the people in this class, we are all retired. If we cannot walk on this path right now, who else will? Okay, starts with the satsang. Satsang. Just be very careful what you watch on the TV, what you turn on on the YouTube, which book you are reading, which company you are keeping. Those are all companies. We are here to diminish the worldly vasanas. That is our job. If we keep on putting more and more worldly vasanas, then we are creating more work for us. In this life also, in future lives also. Because vasanas, as, as we know, they travel. The, these things won't travel. No matter how beautiful the body we have, it's not going to go with us. No matter how big the stones we have in our locker or our bank account, it's not going to travel with us. But the vasanas definitely will travel with us. Because vasanas are so subtle. And who created those vasanas? We did. Who is going to get rid of them? We will. So that's why Shankar Charaj is telling us, keep that kind of a company, please. Okay. So let's see number 11, what else he tells us. Ma kuru dhan jan yovan garvam harti ni meshat kalaha sarvam maya mayam idam akhilam budhvaha brampadam tvam pravish viditvaha bhajkovindam bhajkovindam Ma means do not. 
Kuru means take. Dhan, the possession. Jan, the people. Yovan, the youth. Garva, pride. Harati, takes away, loots away. Nimeshat, in a moment. Nimesh, Nimesh is actually the blinking of the eyes. That's called a Nimesh. So Nimeshat in a blink of an eye. Kalaha, the time. Sarvam, all these. Maya mayam, full of illusory nature. Idam means this. Akhilam, all. Budhva, after knowing. Brahmpadam, the state of Brahm. Tvam means you. Parvish, enter into. Viditva, after realizing. He is advising it to us that take no pride in your possessions. In the people at your command. In the youthfulness that you have. Time loots away all these in a moment. Leaving aside all these, after knowing their illusory nature, realize the state of Brahma and enter into it. I mean, where can we find a more clear message? What to stay away from and what to do? All our life we've been just feeling so proud of our achievements, our things, our relationships. They can be taken away with the blink of an eye. So false vanities and hollow conceits, they keep on tying us to this world, world of coming and going, which is called a sansar or bhavsagar. And we just keep on creating a false attitude towards these things and beings around us. We don't even mind saying, my people, my husband, my wife, my children, are they really ours? This my is the cause of the problem, me and mine. My joys, my things, or even my ideas. No idea is ours. No idea, all of this has come from God. Rishi Patanjali made it very clear to us. Sure, we learn it from a guru, but guru has a guru and he has a guru and a guru and a guru and who is the ultimate guru? God. Nobody owns it. So these are the false vanities, he says, throw away. Because otherwise you're going to keep on suffering the storm suffer. This is a finite shoot. This is a flood of a change. This just keeps on eh? giving us the aches, the pains, the worries, the stress. So all these are really the unavoidable contents of the objective world. Sure, we live in it. That's why we cannot avoid it at the physical realm. But they should not be in our mind. Whether it's a wealth or a social connections, or family status, youth, or it's a vigor. We have built our platform of sense enjoyments based upon this. And that's why we just keep on playing this drama. Drama of a passion and lust can end only in utter dissipation and exhaustion. Because we know wealth is never constant. And it can never stay faithful. Must move from hand to hand. Youth can never last for long. Relationships in this world, the social status, the popularity, the power, they are all momentary. 
momentary. We cannot hold on to it. So that's why he says, instead of going after these, seek the knower of all. The principle that illumines all the knowledges, all the experiences. And Sanskrit term for this is Sakshi Chaitanya. In the very core, realize that this consciousness, I am Atma. Our inner experiences is the consciousness which is infinite everywhere. This Atma is part of that Paramatma, which is everywhere. So he says, get in touch with that. So this is what he is telling us over here. Brahma Padam Tvam Parvish Vidvitva Parvish, not just only know, not just know theoretically, or not just know that, hey, God is up there in the seventh heaven. He says, enter into, become one with it. Look at the depth of this philosophy. And not just a philosophy. You see, practically he's telling us how to do it also. Okay. So remember these three terms, Sakshi, Chaitanya, Ayam, Atma, Brahma. Let's look at verse number 12. Din yaminyo sayam prataha shishirva santo puna ayata kalaha kridati gachanti ayu tatapi na munchati ashavayu bhaj govindam bhaj govindam I'm just only reading it. You will see how beautifully Poonam is going to sing it. It's a really beautiful verses. And especially when we know the meanings also, it really touches our heart. And that's why you feel that way every time she sings. So my job is just to, to explain a little bit. The real pleasure is when you hear it singing. Okay. Day and night. Sai. The dusk, prataha, dawn. Shishir vasantaho, winter and spring. Punha again, ayataha, come and depart. Kalaha time, kredati, supports, gachati, ebbs away or goes away. Ayu, life, tat api, and yet, no means not munchati leaves asha vayu the gust of desire. Day and night, dawn and dusk, winter and spring, again and again come and depart. We have seen it how many, how many winters and springs we have seen. Time supports and life ebbs away, and yet one leaves not the gusts of desires. <laughs> right? See, that's why our rishis, they gave us a beautiful program to follow. In which stage in life, what to do? But do we do it? Or how many of the people are really familiar with it? What are we supposed to do in Brahmacharya? What is Grishtashram? These days in the Brahmacharya, they are doing what in Grishtashram should be done. Everything is just mixed up. People cannot walk, but they want to travel. So look at different, what we are supposed to do, we are doing it something differently. Desires keep on growing. Over here, he says, time supports and life ebbs away and yet one leaves not the gusts of desire. Kalaha kridati gachati ayu. So the day decays to end itself into night. The night dies away only to 
become a day again. I mean, we all feel that yeah? it's already October and we think the year has just started. That's how fast the days roll into nights and nights into the days and month, month after month, year after year. Time rolls up in the waves of years. Time moves on. It does not stop for anybody. Right now, in this moment, it's going to be past pretty soon. Present keep on becoming the past. Time never stops on no condition for no person. It is ever on the march. That's what said. The young, courageous heart of the spiritual child, the Nachiketa, realizes this ridiculous tamasha. Only nine-year-old boy, he saw this tamasha. But we, even in our elderly age, we don't see it as a tamasha yet. And for your information, that is the scripture we're going to start on Thursday. What does Nachiketa say to his old father? He's reminding him, a little boy reminding the father. He says, things born and must die and perish away only to be born again. Nothing is permanent. In that scripture, we'll see the same young hero face to face talking to the teacher who is a Yamraj, the Lord of Death. And Lord of Death offers him a long life, a lot of wealth, a lot of opulence. But that young child says, even the longest life that you can give is but a trifle. May you keep yourself the dance and the music. He says, I don't want that. I want to know the reality. I want to have the Tattva Gyan. I want to know the absolute. I want to know the truth. I don't want all these enchanting things. Whether it's a long life or the dance or the dancers or the wealth. That's the kind of a determination he had. He says, Api Sarvam Jivitam Tomev We'll see that in first chapter of Kathapanisha. See, we don't recognize this. Even after reading it, listening to it, we don't recognize it. That life is fleeting. Time keeps on moving. We still want to, we have the desires to enjoy the sense objects. We strive, we sweat. We toil for something which is so finite. And these painful, even though we know these vasanas are painful, but we just keep on adding to this bundle of vasanas. That's why he says it's a tragic. It's a sad. This glitter of the objective world is definitely illusory, but we are so tempted by it. Very dazzling, dazzling glow of joy is concealing the highest reality, and we don't see this highest reality. Few weeks ago, in our Sunday class, we did the Isha Vasyopanishad. And if you remember this over there, he said a golden disk covers the brilliant face of truth. So everything that is here present is clothed by Ish. And we got to know that Ish. Desire for the fleeting, delusory, golden deer is for the time being seemingly more powerful to us. And life is just ebbing away. 
and the desire fed by the sense gratification only grows more and more. Death, death is crawling behind us. Disease and decay accompany the death. Worries and the anxieties are part of it. But still we want the joys of this pain-ridden objects. How sad. That's why he keeps on telling us, be wise, give up desires, seek the all-satisfying reality that lies behind them. Mental show of change and sorrow. The infinite alone, the God alone, the reality alone, the truth alone will satisfy you and seek it. Okay. Let's do number 13 also, because at least start it, because after this, so this, this is called uh, all these are sung by Shankaracharyji. But the next 14 verses will be sung by very spontaneously by the disciples. Each disciple just recited one verse spontaneously. That was the effect of Shankaracharyji's wisdom and the presence. Okay. So, but let's finish with this Shankaracharyji's verses. Then next week, we'll start with number 14. At least we, I can just give you the meaning of it. Maybe we can, I can explain next week to you. Ka te kantaha, dhangat chintaha, vatul kimtav, na asti niyantaha, tri jagatihi sajjan, sangati ekaha, bhavati bhav arnav tarne no kaha. Ta means where is, te means your. Kanta, wife. Dhan gat, pertaining to wealth. Chinta, worry. Vatul, oh distracted one. Kim, is there? Tav, to you. Na asti, not is. Niyanta, the ordainer of rules. One who ordains or command. That's a niyanta. Three Jagati in the three world. Sajjan of the good. Sangati, association. Ekaha, alone. Bhavati becomes Bhav Arnavatarne. To cross the sea of change. See, Tarne, Tarne means to cross. Arnav, the sea. It's also called a Bhav Sagar. Okay, over here he is using the word Arnav, Naka, boat. boat. Oh, distracted one. Why worry about wife, wealth, etc.? Is there not for you the one who ordains? In the three worlds, it is the association with good people alone that can serve as a boat to cross the sea of change. Again, he is emphasizing the company which we keep. He wants to have the rung of the sung on us, the right sung, the good company. Once we are colored with that, then we'll, you'll see that how easy it is to move towards the right direction. Sat Sang, he's not talking about Ku Sang, that's also a Sang, but he keeps on talking about Sat Sang. So I'll uh, go through the details of it next week. That's where we'll start our next week class. So right now I would like Punamu to uh, sing. Before she sings, let me just do the Shanti Mantra. So, and Punam, you can get ready with that then. Om Purnamada. Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnase Purnamadai Purnameva Vasheshate Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much. Now Purnam will recite all these verses which I just went through. Namaste Harshi. Namaste. Namaste Purnam. Om Shanti 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 Om. 
वयसी गते कह काम विकार वयसी गते कह काम विकार शुष्के नीरे कह का सार शुष्के नीरे कह का सार शीने वेते कह परिवार शीने वेते कह परिवार ज्ञाते तत्व कह संसार ज्ञाते तत्व कह संसार भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम गोविंदम भज मूढ़ मते मा करु धन जन यौवन गर्व मा करु धन जन यौवन गर्व हरती निमेश ते काल सर्व हरति निमेश ते काल सर्व माया माया मिधम अखिल भूद्वा माया माया मिधम अखिल भूद्वा ब्रह्म पदम तम प्रविश विधित ब्रह्म पदम तम प्रविश विधित भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम गोविंदम भज मूढ़मते दिन यामान्य श्याम प्रात दिन यामन्य श्याम प्रात शिश्रावास शिश्रव सत पुनरयात शिश्रव सत पुनरयात काल क्रीड़ति गच्छति आयु काल क्रीड़ति गच्छति आयु तदपी न मुंचति स आशा वायु तदपी न मुंचति आशा वायु भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम गोविंदम भज मूढ़मते काते कांता धन गति चिंता काते कांता धन गत चिंता वातुल किम तव नस्ती नयंता वातुल किम तव नस्ती नयंता तिर तिर गति त्रिगति सज्जन संगत वेर का तिर गति सज्जन संगत वे का भवती भवानर तरने नौखा भवती भवानव तरने नौखा भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम 
गोविंदम भज मूढ़ मते थैंक यू